What's up rock stars? So today I am doing a tutorial for you on this look right here. This is something that I would go to if I was going out and needed something dark and sexy but still want a little bit of color because I love color. Needs me some color in my life. <laughs> then this is my go-to. Um, I love doing like really dark smoky looks for going out just because I feel like I don't have to worry as much when my mascara starts to fall or things like that. I can just kind of go in the corners and touch it up a little bit but since the lower lash line is so smoked out I don't have to worry about my makeup looking like it is falling off my face. This is going to be a voiceover tutorial because it is super nice out and all of our windows are open and there was just no way I tried so many times to film this for you without a bunch of noise and distraction between dogs barking and cars and children which I'm sure you can hear right now <laughs> running around outside um so yeah without further ado let's get started all right so we are going to start off with some scotch tape today we are going to first put it on our hand to take off some of the adhesive and then we are going to line it up with the corner of our eye so that we have a nice sharp edge when we take off the tape after the eyeshadow is done then i'm going to go in with the nars Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. Um, this is probably the greatest eyeshadow primer I have ever used. Um, I have super oily eyelids, as I've mentioned in the past, and this won't budge. And you are about to find out exactly how good it is. I'm going in with the NYX Jumbo Pencil in the color Milk right now um, to make a white base um, so that the color that we go in with next will pop dramatically and that color is from the Kat Von D star studded palette this is in the shade fascination street and as you can see it is not going on very well. Um, I've used this color before. I've actually used pretty much all of the colors in the Kat Von D Star Studded Palette um, because I love her and I am like tried and true to all of her products um, just because of what she stands for. Um, however, I'm not gonna you know sit here and tell you that this eyeshadow is amazing because as you can clearly see in these clips it's not the greatest and the reason why is because the formulation of the eyeshadow did not go well with the stickiness of the um, smudge proof eyeshadow base and the NARS jumbo pencil um, so I'm going to try and blend that out right now with the color Light Brown from the Lorac Pro 2 palette. Um, this is a really good transition shade, which is what I'm attempting to use this for right now. But I'm also trying to blend out the Fascination Street shade as much as I can because it, as you can see, is super choppy looking right now. Um... And it didn't work, so I tried to go back in with a little bit more Fascination Street to even it out. Um, basically what was happening is when I put my brush down on my eyelid, all of the color stayed in that one spot. It did not blend at all, and I kept having to go back in with the color and putting it in each like individual area of my eye. Um, and then to start the smoky eye portion, we're going to go in with the color charcoal from the Lorac Pro 2 palette as well. 
I'm putting this in the crease and the outer V and again trying to blend out that Fascination Street shade as much as I can so that it looks as seamless as possible. Um, which as you can see still is not working all that great but I promise the end result actually does not look that bad and I did like it uh, for a going out look you know when it's dark and or not dark but when the lights are low you know nobody's gonna be looking close enough at your eyes to be like oh you got a little bit more purple right there than you do everywhere else and you should really fix that no there nobody's gonna care I care I was bucking me the entire time which is why I went back in with the blending brush that I used that light brown shade with to try and blend out not only the charcoal but the Fascination Street one more time. Um, I actually went back in with this blending brush multiple times throughout my eyeshadow process um, just, just to try and make everything nice and seamless. Then we are going in with the black shade from the Lorac Pro 2 palette and we're just kind of putting this in the outer V, um, mainly focusing it along the lash line. Um, I do bring it in pretty far into the crease in the outer V, um, but nowhere near as close or as far as I did the charcoal color. And this was really just to give the eye some more dimension and some more shape. Um, because when you're doing a dark smoky eye, you want to bring as much definition into it as possible so it doesn't look like you just stamped some black right on your all over your eye and somebody punched you in the face. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to take that blending brush again and blend out not only the black but the Fascination Street shade a little bit more as well. And then we are going in with probably my favorite part of this whole tutorial. It is the Maybelline Eye Studio Gel Liner in the color Blackest Black. I am so sorry. I, I was listening to Neo <laughs> when I was filming this and I, I was just getting real into it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know. <laughs> Anyways, back to our liner. Um, so, normally with gel liner, I'll use an angled liner brush, um, but that brush was dirty today. So, I used this free sample that I got from Sigma for, I think it was like a purchase of $30 or more or something like that. Um, and I believe this is the E35... I'm not 100% sure. I'll leave that in the description box below. But this is probably the greatest eyeliner brush I've ever used in my life. My gel liner is never, ever this precise, ever. Like, at some point in time, the brush decides that it's going to do its own thing. And then I end up with really, really thick bands instead of these nice, thin cat eye bands um, so that didn't happen today with this little teeny tiny liner brush and I'm loving it I, I think my eyes look more open than they do any other time I use gel liner and it just it was so easy to work with and I felt like I was in control of the eyeliner not the brush and my sensitive eyelids blinking every two seconds. Um, but it was great. Uh, you can see right here when I'm doing the wing that it did get kind of messy on that outer part, but that's okay. Um, that's the reason why we use that scotch tape is so that in the event that that does happen, we can just go shroom, take the tape off, and you still have that perfect sharp edge that um, you're looking for when you're doing a smoky cat eye like this and you didn't have to take extra steps with concealer or makeup remover or 
you know, anything else like that, um, you just remove the tape and you're good to go. And when I remove the tape, I always remove it going up towards my forehead, never down towards my lips, because um, even though we took off some of that adhesive, it could still pull the eyelid a little bit too much. So there's a close-up of how precise everything is after removing the tape. It just looks awesome, in my personal opinion. Um, and everybody has scotch tape in their house. It's like not even, like I didn't have to spend $30 on some amazing product to get my eyes to look that sharp and precise. Alright, so I've already moved on to my face. I should probably catch myself up here. Um, we are going in with the L'Oreal True Match in the shades N3 and C2. Uh, I have cool undertones in my skin. I feel like except for my face um, because I struggled with acne so much when I was younger. I have a lot of redness from acne scarring and that kind of stuff. Um, and I also have a few craters on my face right now. So using cool toned foundations makes my face look more pink than it already does. So that's why I mixed in that N3 uh, shade because A, it's a little bit darker so it will even out my skin tone a little bit because my face is lighter than the rest of my body. Um, but it also makes it a little bit more warm so that I'm not as pink when the foundation dries. Um, and I'm using the Sigma F80 Flat Top Kabuki Brush to press this into the skin. Um, as you can see, I'm not wiping it on my face at all. Um, that really just moves product around and it's not pressing it into the skin and doing it that way the coverage will A, not be as good to begin with, and B, your makeup will come off a lot sooner. By pressing it into the skin, you're pressing it into the skin, your pores are kind of soaking it in and it stays a lot longer. And then I am going in with the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. This is in the color Light Number 10. I'm going to use this under my eyes, on my forehead, my nose, my cupid's bow, and my chin. And what this is going to do is this is going to conceal any dark circles that I have under my eyes. Um, and as well as highlight that area. And then we're going to use it to highlight the other areas of the face. Um, I always put it on my chin as a highlight, but today it's also going to add a little bit of extra coverage to the little red craters that are going on on my chin today. And then we are going to use the Sigma F86, 84, 82... I think it's the F86. I can never remember. I'm so sorry. I will leave it in the description box down below. But we are going to use that to blend out the concealer under the eyes. Um, it is their flat top, or not, I'm sorry. It is their tapered kabuki brush, um, part of the F80 Sigmax synthetic line. Um, I say F80 because every single brush in the line starts with F and then it's 80, it's 80, 82, 84, and 86, and 88, I believe, are the numbers. I don't know. I will leave all that information in the description box down below. But I'm going to use this to blend out the concealer all over my face. I don't know what I was thinking today. Normally I do my forehead, my nose, my cupid's bow, and my chin with the F80 or the Beauty Blender, whichever one that I use to do my foundation instead, um, so that there aren't any harsh lines between the highlight color and the foundation. But I didn't do that for some strange reason, and then it dawned on me that I probably should. <laughs> so after I do that, I'm going to go in with the... 
yellow color highlight from the Kat Von D Shade Light Palette. And I'm going to use this to set my under eyes, my forehead, my nose, my cupid's bow, and my chin. I love the Kat Von D Shade Light Palette. If you have not tried it, I would say definitely spend the money to do so. I believe they're... I think it's $46, $46 or $49, but you get six shades, and they're huge, so that's awesome, um, and they are just so beautiful on and off camera, just so pretty, um, and then I'm going to just line my lower waterline with the Urban Decay 24-7 pencil liner in the color Zero. I love this pencil. It's been my ride or die for a while. Um, it does not stay 24-7 like it does claim. It does tend to smudge on me, but when I go in with a shadow underneath it like I am right now, this is the black shade from the Lorac Pro 2 palette again, it will stay for a good like six to eight hours I would say um, for sure without having to touch up um, but part of the reason why I'm using the black shade is so that when I'm out I won't have to touch up um, and then I'm gonna highlight the inner corners of my eyes with the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk just because it was sitting right there and it looked good at the time and then for some unknown reason I went in with the Clinique bottom lash mascara in the shade black to do my lower lashes and completely forgot to do my upper lashes and as I'm doing this it dawns on me oh yeah I have no mascara on my upper lashes <laughs> So I'm going to go in really, really quick with the Maybelline Rocket Mascara in the color, I believe it's just black. It might be black as black, because um, I know that they do tend to do that. When I go to the drugstore and I buy Maybelline products and there's a black and there's a black as black, I always get black as black, so I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, and then we're going to go back in with the... Kat Von D Shade Light Palette. We're going to use the lightest contour shade for our contour today. I, as you can see, I draw this on pretty dang heavy. And it looks crazy. Like, even on camera, it, it doesn't, this does not look cute. But, once you blend it out with the blush and uh, the foundation and everything else, it will look stunning, I promise. Speaking of blush, I'm going in with the Becca Mineralized Blush in the shade Damselfly. I'm putting this on the apples of my cheeks and then brushing it back towards that contour. And as you can see, it is super, super heavy as well, um, just like the contour. But that's why I blend everything out and make it look nice and seamless. And I use the Sigma Duo Fiber Powder Blush Brush for this. Um, I apologize for continuously using this brush on camera because they don't sell it anymore. Um, but both of their dual fiber brushes are amazing. I just haven't had the time to go and pick one up yet to replace my powder blush brush. Then last but not least, I'm going in with the Bite Beauty Matte Lip Crayon in the color Leche to do just a simple nude lip. Um, you don't want anything too heavy on your lips when you have a really heavy eye like this because this kind of balances it out. And I love this color. Then, last but not least, we're using the Urban Decay All Night All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray to finish everything off. And then we do a little dance. <laughs> All right, well that's it for me, Rock Stars. Let me know if you like this look by giving it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm super excited for my 
next upcoming video as well, which you will get to see hopefully in just a few days. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.